Okay, we're going to look now at multi-sheet spreadsheets. So basically this is taking the value from one sheet and using it in another. This is pretty straightforward. We kind of already looked at this a little bit uh, a couple weeks ago. But for now, I want to give you another little overview. So as you can see, I have a whole bunch of sheets here. We're going to go through all of these this week. Um, first of all, though, I'd like to draw your attention to these two, sheet one and sheet two. Now, it's really easy to create a new sheet. You click this plus button here, and that adds a new sheet. So ordinarily, when you start, you only have sheet one. Then you click the plus button, and you get another one. You can see this is sheet 13, because I have a whole bunch here. And far, it numbers it related to the total sheets. So if you click this little down arrow here, it gives you all of these options. So, so after you've clicked the plus button to add a new sheet, you can click this down arrow to delete it, duplicate it, copy it, rename it, protect it, hide it, move it, uh, and move it left or right. You can also move them by clicking and dragging, and that will allow you to reposition them wherever you would like. So let's click this down arrow again, and let's talk about each of these options. Delete is pretty obvious, that's going to delete it. Duplicate will make a copy of it on this current sheet, and so basically if you have a bunch of values or if you've made a form or something, you can use duplicate to make a copy of it. Copy to is a little bit different. If you click on this, you get this dialog box and it allows you to copy it to another sheet. That can be pretty handy if, it, if you've maybe created something that you'd like to use somewhere else and you'd like to copy it to another spreadsheet file. So rename, pretty obvious, you click on that, it will allow you to rename it. Protect, this, maybe we should go through it. What does this mean? It means that it basically limits who can change it. And the default setting is anyone invited as a collaborator, so there's no protection, only me. So basically I'm the only one who can change it. And then me and the collaborators selected below. So basically if you've shared it with 15 people, you can pick and choose who of those it's shared with can change it. So I'm going to click only me and click done and you can see it puts this little padlock next to it so you know it's protected. Now hide sheet, it does exactly that. It makes it hidden and it gives you this little pop-up menu here which will allow you to unhide it. So let's go ahead and do that right now. See here when you click on view, you have a hidden sheets option and that gives you a list of all the hidden sheets. Well, why would you want to do this? Why indeed? We will talk about that a little bit later on. So for now I'm going to click on this to bring sheet 13 back and I'm going to actually just delete it. So you can see it'll ask if you're sure, say okay, and it's gone. So these are the two we're sort of interested in. Now I'm going to change the name of sheet 2 to something more manageable. So I'm going to click on the down arrow, click on rename, and we get this sort of standard rename dialog. I'm going to call this desserts. And then I'm going to click on this one, sheet 1, and I'm going to rename it. I'm going to rename it to dessert totals. So now we have these two sheets. Now I wanted to talk about using multi-sheet values. So basically using the values from this sheet and this one here. It's pretty straightforward. It's not significantly different from using a value in the same sheet. I believe we've actually already talked about this. Uh, it's very similar to this. The main difference is you have to specify which sheet the value is coming from. We type equal desserts, that's the name of the sheet, an exclamation mark, and then the cell that we're interested in. And we get that value. You can see I specified A2. If I click on desserts, A2, there is the value 44. Well, that's all well and good, but this says total. So how would we get the total? Well, that's easily done. We've talked about the sum function. So we want to sum all the values from the dessert sheet in the range A2 to A21. Don't forget to close your parentheses, hit enter, and there we go. And just to make sure that's correct, we're going to select all of these values by holding shift and clicking and missing the cell, but you know. And then we can see down here we have the sum of that value. That's pretty easy. Let's look at that again. If we go equals sum, type the name of the sheet, an exclamation mark, and then the range of items. Whoops. We want the cookies, not the cakes. 
So we'll do, go B2, semicolon, B21. Close our parentheses, hit enter, and there we go. Again, it's equals sum. The sheet we're interested in, exclamation mark, and the range of items we want to sum. Now you're not limited to pulling from a single sheet. You can pull from as many as you would like and it works just the same. And it works with every function. We could do an average to, of desserts by typing, av by typing equals average parenthesis desserts exclamation mark and then the range of items we are interested in, A2 colon A21. Close parenthesis, enter, and there we have it. And of course, in the way of things, we can click the box and drag over and see that it will automatically adjust our formula. So it goes from A2 here to B2 to C2. It's to C2. It's very handy. Very, very handy. So this way you can sort of build reports pretty quickly. Now, it's a little cumbersome to type out A2, A21, that sort of thing. So what if you wanted to refer to something by name? Like if you wanted to name this group, what, what, what about that? So that gets us into named ranges. So I'd like to talk about that. So if we highlight these by clicking and dragging or clicking, holding shift, and then clicking down here, and then right click, we get all of these options. Cut, copy, paste, sort range, and name and protect range. And this is what I'd like to talk about. So if we click on this, you can see I've created some other ones, but we'll get to those later. And this allows us to name the range. So if we call it cakes, and you see here is the range of items it covers. And if we click protect, that means that these can't change now. So we can't change them once it's been protected. So we'll go ahead and click done. And this is sort of similar to what we were talking about when we were protecting a sheet. It's essentially when I said it can't be changed, what I meant was it can't be changed by anyone other than people on this list. So we're going to go ahead and leave that. You see this has a little padlock to show that it can't be edited by anybody but me. And you can see these are not protected. And like I said, we'll get to those a little bit later. So what does this mean? Well, this means that now over here, rather than typing out this, and in fact, we don't even need the desserts. We can just say sum cakes, and it works exactly the same. So just to illustrate that one more time, if we come over here to cookies, we highlight all of these items from 2 to 21, so 20 items inclusive. We right click, go to name and protect range, enter a name for that range. We're not going to protect this one. We just click done. And that's it. It's ready to go. We come over here. And here to maybe better illustrate it, I'm going to put it on a different line. So if I type equals sum, open parenthesis, type cookies, close the parenthesis and hit enter, we see we get this, the same sum that we have here. Because essentially what's happening is we've replaced this value with this value we've created a variable called cookies that represents this range. It's extremely useful when we're creating reports or if we're having to sum up a bunch of values or anything of that nature.